This video is an introduction to Henry Ward Beecher's Plymouth Church on Orange Street, as well as tour guide extraordinaire Brad Smith from Willowtown, known to many of us who have a special interest in Brooklyn Heights history. His tour was extensive, but I decided to emphasize his Plymouth Church discussion. Brad is super knowledgeable and is a treasure. It is individuals like Brad that make Brooklyn Heights the interesting place it is today. I don't even know that Henry Ward Beecher wanted a podium. He simply, he, he didn't want a pulpit as such because in, in the book, it looked like when, when he, he came on stage mm -hmm. that he was suddenly inspired. Mm -hmm. He would open his Bible and there was the revealed word of God. Well, he planned and plotted. He knew exactly what he was going to do. Uh, so he, great showman, really. Uh, two services on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. And he packed them in and he said, please don't come back for the third service because that's for our friends who will come over on the Staten, well, it wasn't Staten Island, hardly, uh, on the ferries, no Brooklyn Bridge. They'll come over in the evening to hear what this man had to say, and mm -hmm. people from Long Island. So there were three services? Take their three services of a Sunday. <laughs> uh, so a, certainly a great place to speak, and always uh, a tradition of guest speakers. Uh, when uh, Charles Dickens visited America, certainly on one of his trips he spoke here, uh, our own Mark Twain, and I'm here to tell you that yours truly heard Hillary Clinton give her first speech mm -hmm. uh, as our junior senator from New York right here. Mm -hmm. Late 1850s, a senator from Illinois. Uh, who was going to speak and give a very important speech. They knew it would be an important speech in the New York area. Uh, and what about speaking right here? He knew people who worshipped here, and they said, well, it's Sunday, why don't you come over and worship with us? So sure enough, Sunday morning, one of the services, February 26th. Abe Lincoln. Look at that. And yes, what, what, what the speech was, was essentially the new Republican Party platform. But, and it was printed off and distributed. But no radio, no TV. It was the speech. It was the speech and, well, the Southerners knew what was coming. It was the platform, you know. What, oh, okay. what does the president do? What does Congress do? Right. What about the new territories that are opening up? What about slave? What about free? As I say, these were the questions that oh, okay. were foremost in everybody's mind. Uh, and when the Southerners heard him, they said, well, there's going to be war. Well, of course, there was, uh, starting in 61. These windows are a later edition, I say later, but they didn't go in until 1907. Now, acknowledging that there's a brass cross here, that there are, are Bibles in the pew, you might look in vain for a reference to an Old Testament story, perhaps creation, depict freedom of expression. Yeah, that has to do maybe with spreading the word of God, but uh, it's very much in line with, in spite of some of their practices, what the pilgrims brought over with them. Plymouth brethren from England who had broken away from the church, they were not going to purify it. They weren't Puritans. Mm. They were dissenters. Uh, and... Therefore, they thought maybe they would prosper. 
better in Holland, which had gotten rid of the Spanish, was now a republic, was now going and growing. New Amsterdam, yeah. world around, trade, trade. Yes, we want you to come in. We don't care who you are, what you are. Work, work, work. Mm -hmm. It was there in Holland. Mm -hmm. So Plymouth Brethren, a lot of them, not all, picked up and went to Leiden. Well, what happens when your little children grow up in Holland? They speak Dutch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we are English. Mm -hmm. Well, and besides, I think they came to the conclusion that if the Dutch will accept us, they will accept everybody. Maybe the Dutch are a little too liberal. So it was decided to go to America. Long story short, they made one stop in England, got on the Mayflower, and that's where the Mayflower Pact was signed. Let's see whose obligation it is to do what here. Uh, and they were headed for Virginia, northern shore of Virginia, which came up to uh, the Virginia Territory, up to what is now that Hudson River, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Would have been good farming land. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. They got blown north, Massachusetts. Try farming on that rock. Well, they tried it, and they finally succeeded after two very hard winters. Finally, a Thanksgiving service with plenty to eat. Thanksgiving, once a year for all Americans. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, as I say, we do trace a lot of our history back to just what these people kind of stood for. The city of churches. Yes, within walking distance of here, there was another congregational church. And it wasn't until about 1930, I think, uh, that that congregation joined here. And we're kind of back to the windows because I think I know part of the deal was bring your stained glass windows with you. <laughs> uh huh. So. We don't have room for them here, but they made room for them in the other room. And we'll see a, Tiffany good, though, are a they? good collection of, among others, oh, really? Tiffany. Oh. Yeah. question always was, if this was a stop, where people waited for to be taken to the next stop, uh, it would have been downstairs. It was absolutely illegal at some point uh, because of the federal law. Remember the questions that were asked mm -hmm. and raised? Federal law says a slave is a slave, is a piece of property. You know, some southern gentleman has paid good money for that property. That property gets away one way or the other. It's stolen property. And if you have stolen property in your home, the revenuers can come in and they're going to, the bounty hunters, they're going to make a good piece of change. Now, and this place was always known, uh, just word of mouth, as the Grand Central of the Underground World.